What's up guys? So today we have an awesome, awesome lady coming on called Karen, um, coming all the way from sunny Ireland. And she is going to talk to us about MS. Now I'm gonna ask her a lot about uh, what it is and her experience with it, because I know she's first-hand experience. Um, so it's gonna be hopefully really interesting. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to, as she is, feel free. Okay, here she is. Oh, internet, always the way. Here she is. Hello. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just turning you off a little bit. There we go. Sounds a bit better. Let me, um, I should put my headphones in actually. Give me one second. Yeah, that's cool. I just realized I wore the same top two days in a row and I actually brought a thingy downstairs. I was like, I'll change quickly. But I literally just finished with the client and then came straight into this. I'm like, damn it, anyway. Ah, it's fine. It's all good. It's one of those days. <laughs> I'm my headphones. How are you doing anyway? What's happening in your world? Yeah, good. All good, all good. Um, may or may not have broken my ankle at the weekend, but that's another story. Shut up. Got a really sexy boot now, so um, I don't know. You know, <sighs> I don't know. Don't know where that what, what journey that's going to lead me down, but you know, I'm feeling feeling pretty special about it right now. I hope you're getting lots of people to sign it. Oh no, it's a boot, it. it's like it's black, so it's like a black thing with Velcro. Oh, so that's zero crack. Yeah, pretty much. Oh pretty no! Much. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it was doing something very. Um... Fun, yes. Fun, yeah. Okay, good. You said yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay though, right? Like, of course it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, but no. Good. Anyway, uh, let's talk about you. Let's not talk about my stupid ankle and ridiculous uh, things that I do for some unknown reason. Uh, <laughs> sure, look. <laughs> let's, uh, yeah, let's start with right. Okay, so. You run MS to Success. The reason yes. being, you've suffered with MS yourself. Mm. So yeah, back in 2012. Yeah, back in 2012, I was diagnosed with MS. And, and oh God, like, I never thought I'd be able to say the words, MS was the best thing that happened to me. You know, like, yeah. never did I think that. And I suppose, you know, when I was diagnosed, there was like three emotions that were really, really loud when it happened. And the first one, of course, is fear, because the only image that I had of multiple sclerosis was someone in a wheelchair. And me personally, I thought, I'm a mom. I have a baby that's less than one years old. I had a, a, like a really great career at the time. And I thought, oh my God, it, like, like I, really ha I was really ignorant to what it was. Like, and I really hold my hand up and say that. So I was thinking, oh my God, how, like, how long do I have before I'm going to end up in a wheelchair? That was like my first thing. Yeah. So well, it, yeah. it, it, it was fear of not knowing. If you're not, no right. was around the corner. The second one then was relief, weirdly. Like relief that like, okay, I have a name to put on these symptoms. You know, I'm not going to have my mind. Okay, now I can actually put it down to that. Mm -hmm. And then this is really weird. The third one was like this light inside my tummy that just got brighter. That said to me, you know what? This isn't your first rodeo. You're going to get through this. And, and it took me a very long time to say this but I actually had the thought of you're going to help other people overcome this. And that was That's the point so of being diagnosed. Like what the hell? Yeah. But that's that the person that you are. It's this, you, the, your job is just like the vessel, but the person you are is mm -hmm. so open and ready to help people with whatever it is. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I was really embarrassed when I had that thought first. I was like, who are you even to even think that? Never mind. Like, that's not even possible, you know, because I, like, I had no idea what was ahead. And I suppose when I think about what was ahead is that the next few years were, you know, spent in a hospital. I had lots of complications with different things and different medications. I think at one point I was in intensive care because some medication that I was starting um, had a tendency to slow your heart down. So it was so weird. I was like in this intensive care in this hospital with people all around me, literally on life support. And I'm there going, eh. I shouldn't be here, but I have to be because I'm trying this new medication, like batshit yeah. stuff, you know? Um, and then it, it wasn't really until, you know, uh, 
I had like another major event happen in my life where myself and my partner broke up on, like on Christmas Day. And a week mm-hmm. or two later, I found myself going, OK, something's got to change here. You know, it, you know, a few years after being diagnosed, I decided to give up medication. I don't recommend that to, to anyone, by the way. So just, you know, big, important exclamation point there. Disclaimer. I, <laughs> yeah, total disclaimer. <laughs> Do not practice this at home. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I figured, you know what, I need to take a bet on myself. And I need to actually give myself an opportunity to heal. Yeah. And, you know, in my head, healing at the time was all about have to do this and have to do that and have to be really strict with myself and, you know, put myself through, you know, the, the rinser to get myself going. And actually, it's really interesting. And, and now that I've worked with so many people, I realize that healing is actually being kind and compassionate to ourselves yeah. and slowing down and listening to our body and treating ourselves <laughs> kindly and not just yeah. outwardly but inwardly as well and I suppose that's where MS to success stemmed from I you know after giving up the medication and and you know the first year after that it was like I just ate my emotions <laughs> put on weight that. felt like shit didn't really do anything other than feel mm-hmm. fear of people looking at me and seeing that I wasn't doing a very good job. And I felt like all eyes were on me, you know, what she do and is she doing the right thing? And, and I felt a lot of pressure. Um, and I didn't know where to turn. Anywhere I looked online, I'd come away feeling more scared and more petrified because all I saw was horror stories. Like, yeah. and you know, I joined some groups online and again, that was all horror story. Not horror stories, but like very negative people tend very... to tell the like the drastic don't they because mm. a lot of the time like maybe they want attention yeah you know? so they're gonna they're not gonna be like actually i did this and it was really good and it worked and they're gonna be like this happened and then this happened and then i combusted and it's like okay yeah that's interesting <laughs> yeah and the thing is what am I supposed to do with this information <laughs> absolutely i want like i wanted someone to help me i wanted someone yes. to say do this and you're going to be fine and there was bits of that around the place. But, you know, having, having gone through putting myself through the ringer an awful lot and having gone back and studied and got so many qualifications and tried out so many different modalities to then going back into my neurologist's office, bearing in mind not on medication against his wishes and against his recommendation and kind of going in after an MRI result going, oh, please don't be bad news or else I'm going to have to go on medication again. And him saying, you know, well, what have you been doing? And me going, um... Well, this, 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 and, you know, yeah. And, and, you know, reading his body language and what way is he breathing and is he looking at me funny and what's he going to tell me? And then him saying, keep doing what you're doing. I was like, what? You were like, are you for real? <laughs> yeah, like lesions all shrunk, um, MS not active, and I had burnout. So I was like, is, is, you know, am I cured, you know? It's like, we don't use that word. Well, you know, am I in remission? We don't use that word. It's burnout. It's when, you know, people in their 50s or 60s, sometimes it naturally leaves their body. So I was like, oh my God. Like, I didn't believe it, honestly, for a while. Like, I told my family, and I remember bawling my eyes out in my car, going, like, did this happen? Did I I make this up? Did Um, I dream it? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, really. And then, you know, it was was interesting because, you know, my, my... autopilot response was go back and get back into the work force you know go and start earning money again and go back and be a normal person and i and i did it for a bit never was, be normal i know what? normal is overrated oh really? i don't think there is such a thing anyway but uh, i agree yeah exactly. <laughs> but yeah I, I i did that and i went back and i did you know help me to buy my car which i'm very grateful for but I was miserable, like really, really miserable. And it's funny, I had all these questions around, should I tell them about, you know, that I had MS and what if it comes back? And then oh, maybe I shouldn't and maybe I'll get overlooked or maybe they'll think differently of me or maybe they won't give me the tasks that they think I can't do. It's like there was all this kind of psychological battle going on in my head, which I wouldn't tell anyone about, but it's only, you know, looking backwards and kind of realizing that it really did stress me out at the time. Well, not um, surprised. Totally. You know, do I tell that person? Can I trust them? Are, are they going to think less of me? Are they going to um, judge me? Totally. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think I would have dreamed at the time, you know, when I was going for a job in the past. You know, I, when I look back and look at my CV, you know, I probably went for jobs lesser than 
what I was capable of and and what I could have done because I had the fear Mm. that my stress response might get, you know, inflamed. I might have a relapse. I might not be able to do the job and I might, you know, send myself in a downward spiral. So there was a lot of BS going on internally. And it wasn't until I actually gave myself the opportunity to be kind to myself, to face my past and actually clear shit up because I realized that I, I had a lot of anger about stuff that had happened in my past. And when I got free from that and then put other things in place um, and actually really started being kind to myself, that's when the healing started. And that's when I decided, like, you know, in a job that I was miserable in after overcoming a mess, realizing what the flip am I doing? So I gave up my job managing a finance company, took a massive risk. (laughs) Good. I know, know. thank God I did. (laughs) Went back and got my qualifications and um, more of them and then set up a mess to success and actually I think a few of them were on last night we had uh our uh final group call of my most recent MS to success program and oh my god I was bawling my eyes out oh, at the end of it like <laughs> oh my god bawling because you know what I I can I can bring myself back to that point where like I know or I'll speak from personal experience I felt lost and nobody would have known that was the thing that kind of nearly upsets me more is that, you know, to the outside world, I was really happy. I was confident. I was bubbly. And yet on the inside, Helen, I was, I was so lonely and I was so worried and so stressed and I didn't dare tell anyone because there's so much going on that it's like, well, I've done this. So can I do this or am I justified to feel like this? Or like, there's just so much, to deal with at one time kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, totally. And, and, and it's, you know, and, and I, you know, it's, it's not sad to say, but when I look back, I kind of nearly feel sad for myself at that point, that it was like, I was that upset and I wouldn't allow myself the space to actually deal with that because I was kind of embarrassed or maybe even felt a bit ashamed that like, I felt like that. And I, I didn't want, I didn't want to feel embarrassed by telling people. And so now, you know, having gone and, left the job I I have such a commitment to help people to help themselves I'm not the answer it's it's not about me but it's about holding the space for people and a really positive space I might just add I don't I don't you know I I don't listen to people's complaints I listen for people's possibility of what's there that they can live into and it's so important to me and even when people don't want to do it I, I I won't push people but I won't let them step backwards either you know, so it's, yeah. it's so important to me. And, and look, that's why MS to Success was born and my Gratitude Attitude Journal was born. It's because there's so many tools out there um, and some of them are great and some of them are not so great. But the MS to Success program is based on all of the things that I wish that I had when I was yeah. diagnosed uh, and they're all in one space. So it, it really comes from, you know, when I think about someone being diagnosed, the disease is treated. I treat yeah. the person. Yeah. MS to success sees and treats the person holistically as yeah. a whole person on their and whole life. And you're looking at them, you're looking at that person. You're not going, you the, you the disease. You're going, no, you're a person that happens to have something that's going on with them right now. But mm-hmm. it's not to say that that's going to be forever. It's not to say that you're not going to be able to get rid of it. It's just that that's what's going on in your life right now. But mm-hmm. actually look at this amazing person that you are. And that, that's just a little part of you absolutely oh so is but i can only yeah. should have seen last night oh my god and i know some of them are on here this evening and i'm, I'm yeah there's make... loads of them that's been saying hi I've been... I, know, I love it oh well, <laughs> i see mary and sarah and nicola hi um, <laughs> but the things that they achieved like and maybe i don't know if i have their permission to say so I'll, I'll maybe say give me a yes actually ladies in the comments if if i have permission to maybe share some of your wins but they were so remarkable of people taking themselves on in such a way that uh, really moved me. Yeah. They make me look really good, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. because yes. they put the work in. Oh, Mary says yes. Okay, amazing. Yay. Thanks, so, Mary. <laughs> Mary. Mary. Mary was on one of my first programs. And Nicola Normal, yes, as well. Amazing. Um, these ladies to me are like giants. They came into the program and, and Mary said yes first. I'll talk about Mary first. Mary came on and Mary has moved home from Spain dealing with MS and is looking after her mom who has dementia and has so much on her plate. Yeah, and her partner is is (laughs) in Spain. 
she's here dealing with this. She's not only learning to drive, she's like looking after so many things all the way around her. Like it's, she blows my mind. And even though she has absolutely so little time to herself, her commitment to the program was unbelievable. The stuff that she has done, like even the first program, she decluttered her whole house. She like put habits and goals in place that I couldn't have done if I was dealing with what she was dealing with. Like just, you know, when you see people and like in my mind, they're like 10 feet tall. They're like just giants of humans. Yeah. Um, just amazing. And then Nicola, for example, the next person that said yes. Nicola, if, I, if you don't mind me saying so, Nicola was a skeptic when she came in first. <laughs> Accountancy background and going, I don't see how this is going to work. And, I, and then had the biggest turnaround. There was, there was one particular exercise um, and Nicola was, like, actually had like a, a visceral reaction to, I don't want to do that. Now, it's nothing terrible. It's nothing like you would do in your, it's no fighting <laughs> or self-defense or anything like that. But it's, it's, it's a particular exercise that I have them do. And she took it on anyway and had the most amazing reaction and response to it. And just constantly taking herself on. And that's the thing within the program. It's like the, the guys that are in it, they set a goal and they do it. And then they go, oh, oh and then it's next. And I don't even have to say anything. Yeah. They're just doing it naturally yeah. because they're, I They've got that. So oh, it's so amazing. And then yeah. Sarah Lennon, who is here as well. Thank you for saying yes, Sarah, too. Sarah Lennon, who was dealing with optic neuritis and, and some vision issues, uh, started running, like started doing couch to 5K. And then because her knees were giving her some trouble, she could have given up because that's what most people would do. But she decided, no, no, I'm not giving up. I'm going to do fast walking instead and I'm going to make it happen. She's well, done that further than she's ever done. And not only that, she's made a goal to read a book and she's on chapter two and she hasn't done that in years because of her sight. Like just... Oh, I love that so much. Isn't it amazing. so amazing? Oh my God, you're so lucky to work with these people. I am so privileged. I cannot begin to tell you. And don't have me cry again, please. Oh, I know, honestly, so I'm always crying. I don't know, you must be even, well, even more so. I I'm like, I'm like, this is my clients as well, though. You just get so involved and it's like, you just care so much for them. I couldn't like, sleep until four o'clock this morning yeah. because I just, yeah. What were you going to say so to your much clients? Sorry. Going on. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. When I, when one of my clients, like either they have a big win or like one of my clients had to tell me that she's got to stop because she's been furloughed and I almost cried. I was like, well, I, I had tears in my eyes. I was like, oh my God, but she, but she's amazing and she's so and she's so dedicated and she works so hard and like and and even just the fact that she you know she had to tell me that she and, it, and I knew that that was going to happen really because mm. you know we, we kind of both knew that it might be a possibility but it was like oh my god but I love her what are we gonna do <laughs> you yeah. know and it, but you just love your clients so much and you have so much like passion for them and just care totally and it's, yeah, but I said to all, all, I say it at the beginning of every program, like I fall in love with you all. And they're, they're probably looking at me going, OK, you weirdo. And then I'm I, hopefully, saying, don't worry. I hope <laughs> I hope that they get it. I genuinely fall in love with all of them. Like I think about them when we're not even like on calls or in the program. Like I, I think about them all every day. It's like they become yeah. part of my family and they may or may yeah. not like that. But they, but they do because they you become well, so they must connected. Do people are getting such good results so they must feel like you're like their safe space you know mm, totally which is really what they need and yeah. all need and, you know and even, uh, even like past clients I still always think of them and then I'm like if I message them are they going to think I'm an absolute weirdo being like oh hey yeah but that, well, you know, no, I messaged one of my clients uh, yesterday I messaged one of my clients that, uh, that finished her program about a month or two ago I messaged her and I was like hey just checking in like I don't want anything from you. I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'll just gorgeous. miss you. <laughs> but I like, I'm, I'm, I totally get it. Like, I'm, I'm even, even when clients have, have finished, I'm like, I don't, that doesn't mean that I stopped caring. Like, mm. I still care about you a lot. And yeah. I still want it's you gorgeous. in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's beautiful, isn't it? Do you know what yeah, I find? I, I think, and I think you get this too. And because of, you know, what we're doing, you know, we're in, we're in a, in a, um, a group together elsewhere. But I think that the biggest thing for me, you know, around healing, you know, people always ask me, you know, what did you do? And, and people want to know like the steps, like tell me the steps and tell me what to do. And that's what I wanted. I want just tell yeah. me what to do and let me do it. And actually one of the biggest things is patience. And my guys will know on here, I don't tell them what modules are coming up next. 
Because yeah. it's like, if they Most see that, then you get the preconceived notion of what it is or what it's going to be like. And, you know, if it's me, you know, I've gone into programs before, like wellness programs or personal development. And I'd end up being like quite cocky at the beginning. I'd be like, I've already done that before. And, you know, mm, uh, you know, whatever it might be. And it's like, actually, if you just bring yourself and be compassionate and allow yourself and actually make the decision, like such a key turning point, make the decision that you're going to mm -hmm. do whatever it takes, you know? Yeah. I remember somebody asking me what I, you know, what do you do? And I said, like, I don't know how to answer that because I, you know, people say, what's your title? I'm like, I don't know. I'm a coach. I'm like, what kind of coach? A sports coach? No. Well, no. And then I'm like, they're like, well, what do you do? I'm like, whatever it takes. Like, yes, yeah. I do whatever it takes. That, that's what I do. <laughs> I haven't quite that's thought of a title yet. People all have these fancy titles and I'm like, I, I know. Um, to be honest though, like, I do think that there's a little bit of kind of, bullshit behind a title sometimes you know so like I, I, I don't know I, people call me a personal trainer and I'm like well I'm not really a personal trainer but mm. they're like well, what are you and I'm like okay I'm a personal trainer but with a difference <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I'm not a personal trainer but that is my qualification yeah. like what do you know what I mean it's just like but it's like when there isn't a title it's like people just make one up and then you're like but that's not that doesn't like there isn't some, there isn't one title that can cover everything that we do. Mm -hmm. There isn't like one thing. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if I was to give you one, I'd probably say badass heart center. Uh, uh, I want to think of a different word for personal, co for personal trainer, but I'll come back to that. But, but badass, you see what badass I mean? it's heart like, there's no, yeah. like there's no like one sentence or one like phrase even mm -hmm. that can like for either of us. It's like, there's no one sentence that can describe what we both do. Mm. And I know. it's like, that's it's kind of awesome, but it's also really difficult to get sort of like, what do you do? Well, great question. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. I know. I haven't, yeah, I haven't answered that for it's myself so yet. Doesn't but you don't need I a just, title. Just I know. I, I could give a shit. Doing what I do and yeah. love what I'm doing. Like, I don't care. But yeah. So yeah, the healing all for me came with the decision. That was the first point to make a decision to actually take myself on and to invest in myself and um, do whatever it took. That and was the big how, thing. So for people that don't know, mm -hmm. can you explain a little bit about what is MS and how did it affect you personally? Sure. I know like some people might have different symptoms, but basically how did it affect you? Yeah, so so MS is a um, it's a neurological degenerative disease. It's not an immune disease, and it affected me by uh, numbness in my right hand. Uh, okay. Originally, I I drove myself to the emergency room in the hospital, and they said, "Look, you've probably slept on a nerve, funny." And I was a really hot doctor. I remember his name and everything, Doctor Oshin. And I remember thinking, like, mm, "Okay, Doctor Oshin, it's fine." <laughs> That's hilarious. We'll do anything like, okay. for what doctor. Yeah. What do you mean I don't have to get naked under my gown? Like, he's like, no, go home. I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> um, We've so all been he, there. He sent me home. And um, then the numbness started growing up my arm. So I drove myself back in a couple of days later. And actually, I noticed it because I was drying my hair. And I realized I couldn't feel the heat on my head. I couldn't feel the heat okay. in my scalp. And then I was like, oh, shit. And then started touching... My body you was like, oh, this is not good. And there was a panic. So I remember like silently packing a bag going, I know I'm going to be kept in and I don't know for what. And, you know, good old Dr. Google. I had a little bit of an idea, but not much. Um, second time I went in, uh, they sent me straight down for an MRI and I kind of knew, okay, shit's getting real now. If, if they're sending you straight to MRI, then it means something. <laughs> yeah. And I was really claustrophobic at the time. They had to give me two Xanax because I was like, I am going to freak out. <laughs> So anyway, I did that. And then they wheeled me into a smaller room. And I remember like, I remember the gown I was wearing was actually matching the curtains in the little room that I was in. I remember having a giggle to that, like amongst like the real seriousness, because I can hear doctors talking outside and they were like, you know, in hushed sentences. And I remember just this moment of kind of like, you know, that dark humor, you know, it's like <laughs> laughing at a funeral nearly and you know, you're not supposed yeah. to be. It was like I had one of those moments in between. I know something bad is going to happen and I'm just going to have to laugh right now because like, I'll just have to deal with it. Um, mm. So anyway, they came in and, and the guy said, oh, and there's demyelination. I was like, is it MS? He's like, how'd you know? I'm like, I held up my phone. And he's like, what? <laughs> it's like, I have Google. Yeah. And what? <laughs> I know. I know. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. And he's like, look, what it, it most likely is the number of lesions on your brain would be normal for an 80 year old. 
and I was 31 at the time. So he said, look, the only way we're going to, you know, definitively uh, do it is if we count the protein or something like that. We do, do a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture, basically. So we're going to keep you in and put you on an IV of steroids. and da, da, da. So that was that. Yeah. So that's how I was diagnosed. So, but, you know, I've heard stories that a lot of people, it takes them like a year or two to get diagnosed. So I was lucky in the fact that I had health really insurance and I drove myself to like a, a private hospital. It's, it's not as easy as that with a lot of people. So I get that, you know, I had a very good experience um, mm. in that and I, and I had excellent care. Um, but I suppose that the, the thing for me that's missing, and it's not that there's anything wrong, but there, there's certainly a missing for me there in the care of a person when they're diagnosed with a disease. Um, and, and again, that's the whole reason behind MS to success. Um, then the second thing that's really important to me is like, independence is really important for me and that people feel good about themselves and have that confidence. And I, I, and I say that because I, I didn't have it for such a long time, even though I might've looked like it, I really didn't. So I've actually set up uh, the MS to Success Employment Summit and, and I may oh, end up changing the title because I spoke to somebody today with epilepsy and he's like, you need to be doing this for more diseases. But anyway, I'm yeah. like, MS is where oh. it's at for me. That's my posse. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we'll see. Um, but, but that's happening on October 3rd and it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for people with an autoimmune disease or MS to have a say on what supports it is that they need or would like or that don't see or maybe things that they really find useful. And then on the other side, it's to have a conversation with employers going, here's how to support or here's how to employ and, you know, set those uh, mm -hmm. supports there. And also for the government to say, look, here's what we need and, and an opportunity to lobby that. So um, if anybody's interested, go to mstosuccess.com and there's a link saying Employment Summit and put your name in. I, and even if you know somebody that maybe, you know, wants to, you know, if they want to be a contribution to it or to be an ambassador and, and help out with it, or maybe if it's a sponsor, you know, an employer that maybe wants to get involved in it too, just come have a conversation because uh, I really want to make a difference in an area that people feel, you know, secure, confident, um, and that have an opportunity to make the difference that they want to you know, and yeah. not be scared about it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible, to be honest, what you're doing. I mean, the business itself is incredible, but, you know, the fact that you're going to all the extra lengths by doing the summit and, you know, like that's, it's, you, you're going beyond the call of duty, so to speak. You know, you're, you're doing more than, I say, I, I say it's a really weird way, but it's like, what your you what you do with your business is like okay that's you doing it you're giving back to a community that you've been in mm -hmm. and that makes sense and it, then you're going a step further and doing a summit and probably going to be doing it for more people than just ms uh, sufferers and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger which is incredible but it's like all come from this amazing place Mm. and it's an amazing place of love and it's just like oh, I just love it I know well, <laughs> I, do you know I, I, I have such a commitment to it because I've been I've been in that place yeah. like with the wondering should I tell a potential employer should I not oh my god yeah. am I good enough to go back will I be able to handle it and actually even if those questions were just answered for me beforehand like I could have had that financial independence I didn't maybe I didn't have to be on benefits for the time that I had, that I was on it, that I could have actually felt better about myself in a quicker amount of time. But here's the thing, if I look at, you know, if people are able to go back to work or be able to have a blended of, you know, working at home, you know, we're all doing that at the moment, yeah. um, and, and or, or setting up their own business and know what supports are there. We've got, you know, if you think about the United Nations goals, you've got economic growth and you've got good health. And they're mm -hmm. my two United Nations goals that I have an absolute commitment to make a difference in. So it's like, if we, there's so many people out there that feel marginalized or feel small. And as soon as, for me personally, what I found difficult, as soon as I went on a benefit, you're kept small. It's kind of hard to come off it because then it's like, you yep. don't have the security. And then what yep. am I giving up? What if the job doesn't work out? Or what if, you know, my MS flares up or what? And it becomes a, a, a vicious circle. So it's and like, it, if and, you're, and it's like, you're so scared to make that leap because it's like there's so many unknowns and mm -hmm. there's no real support in that area and I 100% think that the benefit system in I would say UK and Ireland collectively and probably more places than that mm -hmm. but uh, I would say that the benefit system is made to keep you on it it's made to keep you in the system it's not Absolutely. made to progress you that's yeah that's the thing uh, I've so just Briefly, I moved to Sheffield um, 
before I started fighting. Mm-hmm. Moved to Sheffield and I couldn't find a job and I was trying to find a job for like two, three weeks. And my cousin was like, after two weeks, he was like, right, you need to go on benefits because you need to pay rent. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, right, cool. I'll do it because I don't want to, but I know I need to pay rent. I actually ended up getting a job like the next week, so it was fine. But yeah. my problem was I went to the benefit office and I was like, look, I've almost like I've I've applied for like fifty jobs. I haven't heard back from any of them, but I'm probably gonna hear back really soon. I just need to pay this month's rent and then I'm good to go. And mm-hmm. they're like, Yeah, so you need to do this, 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 this. And I was like, No, 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 I wanna I want a job. I just I just wanna work. Like that's it. I just, all I wanna do is mm-hmm. get a job. If you can just yeah. give me a job right now, then let's just let's just do it now. And Sorry. they were like, no, that's not how it works. You have to go on this system and then this system. And I'm like, but I don't want to be, I don't want all this. I just want to pay my rent once. And if I can get a job now, then I don't even have to be in the system. I just need the job. I don't want the, I don't need the system. I just want the job. But yeah. the, the, as I worked out and I hadn't had any experience of it before. So that was my first experience. As I worked out, the benefit system is there to keep you in the system. It's not there to help you progress. Mm -hmm. And if you've got an illness or even an injury or anything underlying, I didn't at the time. I just moved, you know. Yeah. Well, do you know what's important for me to say? And 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 look, the benefits are there. That are there are so many that are brilliant. And I I really and it really helped me. And it's important for me to say that I I needed to be on it for a time, and that was brilliant. And even if I stayed on it nothing wrong so I really just want to make that point that there's nothing wrong with being on it what, no, what no, I found no. difficult was is that I did want to go back out and earn money yeah, and I found that difficult that's, 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 yeah, yeah so I just I really want yeah. to make sure that and I know that you're yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, too but it's important for me to say there's nothing it look it's so great that we live in countries that can that have it. support us yeah. like that and it's so great that you know I find every single program that I have I have people that either want to go back and study or people that want to go back into the workplace or people that want to set up their own business always yeah. which is remarkable. And then mm-hmm. I, I see all of the blocks to doing that. So that, that's the reason for the MS to Success yeah. program, just to go and serve and, and yeah. hold that space. So, and now so you've I, got experience of all the different sections. So it's like, you're the person to speak to. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, look, just which, if I can help someone, I, I have a mission to create 10 jobs out of this MS to Success. And okay. Summit, I like so that. I'm, I'm like saying that out loud going, okay, that, I've got to do it now. That's a big, uh, that's a big ask. Yeah. That's scary. I know. I'm so impressed. anybody, any ambassadors, what I'm trying to find out at the moment is globally what supports are there for people? Because this isn't just Ireland. This is global that we want to bring speakers and ambassadors and, and people with MS into the conversation. So if, if there's anybody that you know in your world or in your space, please go visit ms to success.com forward slash I'm going to put it in. It's, okay. Yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. What's summit? Yeah. Um, I think so. I'm like, hang so on, I'll check that it out. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, it's on ms to success.com and they'll see the employment summit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, brilliant. Well, look, I hope that was of use to you. I hope, I hope that was. Oh of man, use. I, I'm fascinated. Just absolutely, just you're so inspiring, and just your your people that you work with are so lucky to work with you. You know, just, ah, all the way around. I'm so lucky to work well, with them. Both, both. You're lucky to work with them, but they're lucky to work with you. Like, there's no doubt, no doubt about that. And I imagine that they're all extremely grateful that they get to work with you. I know I will well, be. Vice versa. That's so kind. Thank you. And look, the very same back to you. Like, all of the love and gratitude. And thanks so much for inviting me on. Like, such an honor. I'm so glad you came on. I'm yeah, so me glad. too. Thank you. You're such a, like, a gorgeous, like, loving badass. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to take that all day long. Yeah, do, <laughs> do. the best discussion ever. Okay. Well, look, my friend is waiting outside. We're going for a dinner, yeah. so I'm going to run. Go so have Thank an amazing so dinner, much. and uh, have I'll an chat awesome to you soon. Week. Yes, definitely. Okay. All right. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Helen. Bye. Bye. Bye.